So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's a very exciting idea. Oh, boy. Yeah, I thought we could base a movie on one of those slow-moving boat ride attractions at Disney World. Oh. Okay, that doesn't sound super exciting. Oh, it's gonna be, though. We could get one of the main actors to pretty much do a Keith Richards impression, a lot of mumbling. Okay, so like a guitarist in his late 50s going about two miles an hour just kind of looking at stuff? No, the Disney ride's just a jumping off point. We're gonna build an adventure movie around that. So what ride are we talking about here? Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, Pirates of the Caribbean. One of those pronunciations, sure. Sure. So we're gonna meet this little girl, Elizabeth Swan, right? And she's helping out this kid, Will Turner, who they found in this big shipwreck caused by pirates. Oh, boy. And she sees this pirate medallion of his, and she keeps it. Okay. So years later, this guy Norrington wants to marry Elizabeth, and he knows her very well. How? Because he's known her since she was a small child. Oh my god. But Elizabeth has a crush on Will, and he has a crush on her. And what's his deal now? Well, he's a blacksmith now, and he's always walking around saying stuff like, Elizabeth! Gotcha. So then Elizabeth falls into the ocean because her corset was too tight, and that medallion sends this magical pulse out into the ocean. Oh, it does. Yeah, and turns out it called to these cursed pirates on this ship called the Black Pearl. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So then Elizabeth is saved by this wacky pirate guy named Jack Sparrow who showed up in Port Royal earlier. Keith Richards. Keith Richards. And even though he saved her life, everybody wants to kill him because he's a pirate. Very rude. Yeah, so he goes on this crazy daring escape where I disregard physics and probabilities and all that boring crap for a bit. You gotta disregard that stuff sometimes. It is more fun that way, but as he's escaping, he's gonna encounter Will Turner. Oh yeah? Yeah, and Jack's gonna go to leave, but Will's gonna throw a sword into the door and lock him in the workshop with them. Why? To kill him, because he freaking hates pirates. He doesn't know that he kind of is one. Why didn't he throw his sword at Jack then? Well, that'd be pretty messed up. You can't get somebody when their back is turned. I guess. So then they have this big sword fight that ends with Jack getting knocked unconscious by Will's boss. Oh, instantly unconscious. That's definitely some brain damage, right? No, it's that wacky kind of head trauma where your eyes cross and you get up a bit later completely fine. Oh, that's the best kind of head trauma. So Jack gets put in a jail cell, and while he's in there, the evil pirates show up, and they just go nuts around town. Whoa. Yeah, so Will throws an axe at one of them, gets him right in the back. Wait, if he throws an axe at this guy's back, why didn't he throw that sword at Jack? Well, this other pirate's not a main character, so. Oh. So then these pirates try to grab Elizabeth, and she puts up a fight by dropping some hot coals on them, but they manage to get her eventually. Oh, hot coals are hot. They sure are, sir. Then Will's gonna get some wacky head trauma, too, and some pirates are gonna recognize Jack. Oh, how do they know him? Well, it turns out he used to be captain of the Black Pearl till there was a mutiny led by this guy Barbosa. Okay, okay. And then Jack's gonna see that when they're hit by moonlight, they turn to skeletons. Oh, now those are spooky. They sure are, sir. Yeah, so I guess Elizabeth and everybody else around town see some skeletons, too. No, Jack's the only one in town that sees this. But how, if there's moonlight... Well, it's a cloudy night. I guess, you know, the moonlight was just hitting this one specific spot in the jail cell and nowhere else. Oh, sniper moons are tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the deal with this curse anyway? That's not a stand-up bit. I do, I do want to know. Well, see, they stole some Aztec gold belonging to this guy Cortez, and this stuff was cursed by the heathen gods. Oh, cursed how? Well, now they can't die or taste or feel, and when there's moonlight, they turn to skeletons. Well, as I said earlier, those are spooky, but how'd that pirate earlier get burned by the coals if they can't feel things? I don't know. Fair enough. So anyway, to lift the curse, they need to return the final medallion with the blood of the person who stole it. And who stole this last coin medallion thing? Will's father bootstrap Bill, but they tossed him in the ocean. Very rude. So now they want Will's blood? Exactly. But see, when they kidnap Elizabeth onto their ship, she's like, my name is Elizabeth Turner. So they're like, oh, this is, this is bootstrap Bill's son. What? So then Barbosa has this nice dinner for Elizabeth, and she is just starving. I thought they couldn't eat. Why do they have fresh food lying around their ship? Unclear. So then is gonna explain the whole curse to Elizabeth, and his whole crew's gonna do this little choreography that they clearly put a lot of work into. Good to have hobbies. And so back at Port Royal, Will's gonna help Jack escape so they can go save Elizabeth. It's gonna be hard for them to get out of there without a ship. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they trick the entire crew of this one ship to go onto another ship, and then they just sneak onto theirs and take it. The entire crew of a ship got onto another ship. Every single crew member, sir. I feel like that doesn't make sense. Well, that may be, but it's gonna drive the story forward. Well, okay then. So eventually the pirates are gonna try to lift the curse using Elizabeth's blood, but she's gonna be like, I lied about my name, you dummies. Right, okay, they just wanna be mortal again though, right? Yeah, those dummies. So then what happens? Well, then there's gonna be this big ship battle, and Will is gonna strike a deal with the pirates. And what's the deal? Well, he gets them to set Elizabeth and Jack free, but Barbosa's sneaky, so he just maroons them on an island. A very 
sneaky pirate. Yeah, but then Elizabeth sets a bunch of rum on fire and they get rescued by her father and that guy who wants to marry her. Gross. So then Jack stops Barbosa from killing Will, right? Right. And he like playfully picks up some coins and tosses them back in the chest, but secretly keeps one. So he's cursed now. He can't die. Technically, wouldn't he be cursed no matter what since he didn't return those other coins with his blood? Technically, yeah, but nobody notices that. Oh, okay, great. So then he has this big sword fight with Barbosa and he does this fun skeleton reveal and then he shoots him just as Will drops the final medallion into the chest. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, and so that's the end of the curse, but people still want to hang Jack because he's still a pirate. Yeah, I guess he is. But then freaking Will bursts in to save them. He throws a sword just beneath his feet so he does this balancing thing. Why didn't he throw the sword at the rope itself? I don't know. Yeah, this guy doesn't really give much thought into where he throws weapons, huh? I guess not. So then Will and Elizabeth help Jack escape. Amazing. And so Jack gets a ship and a crew. There's a cowboy there. It's a great time. What? And so, yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. We're going to have to get somebody really, really good to play Jack Sparrow, though. Definitely, sir. Someone that's going to be synonymous with the franchise. Somebody we wouldn't think of replacing. So, you have a pirate sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. So what's going on with the characters? Okay, so Elizabeth and Will are about to get married, right? Okay, okay. So marriage is still a thing, then. Interesting. It... Yeah. Why wouldn't marriage still be a thing? Well, it's just that in the last movie, they all found out that there was treasure cursed by heathen Aztec gods, so... Yeah? Well, I just figured that everybody finding out that Aztec gods are real might have some impact on their religious beliefs. But you're saying marriage is still totally a thing. Uh yeah, marriage is still a thing. Okay, great! Great, so anyway, their wedding is actually stopped by this guy, Lord Beckett, and he has warrants to arrest them because they helped Jack escape in the last movie. Oh, right, 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 right. So he wants Will to go find Jack because Jack has this compass that points to whatever the holder wants the most. Okay, so the whole movie's about finding a compass? Well, see, actually, the compass is going to point to a key which opens a chest which contains a heart which belongs to Davy Jones who controls the seven seas. Oh, okay, that sounds like enough nautical theme MacGuffin to fill up a pirate movie. Yeah, I figured that would be enough checkpoints, so Will takes off, because Beckett says he'll set Elizabeth free if Will does this. He's got to find Jack in the entire sea? Yeah, and he's going to pretty quickly. Oh, he is? Yeah, because in these movies, the Caribbean Sea's the size of a little fishing pond. Oh, it is. That's great. So anyway, Jack is on the Black Pearl, and he's going to be like, why is the rum always gone? That's like what he said in the last movie, kind of. It sure is, sir. People really like that line, so we're bringing it back, kind of. Oh, bringing a line back because people seem to really like it as tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So anyway, Jack gets visited by Will's father, Bootstrap Bill, who's a part of Davy Jones's crew on the Flying Dutchman ship. Okay. And Bootstrap is like, hey, you made a deal with Davy Jones years ago, so now you gotta join the crew or be taken by the Kraken monster. Both terrible options for sure. Yeah, and then Bootstrap leaves Jack with the black mark which the Kraken is attracted to, and he vanishes back to the Flying Dutchman. Oh, this guy can teleport. I bet that's gonna come into play later. Nope. Oh, okay. And so then we're gonna see that the Kraken can take down a ship in like two seconds flat. Very scary. Yeah, unless there are main characters on the ship, in which case it takes five to ten minutes. Nice of the Kraken to slow down for important people. It sure is, sir. So anyway, eventually Will finds the Black Pearl on this island and discovers that Jack and his crew have been captured by a tribe of cannibals. Well, how'd they get out of the cannons? No, not cannonballs. These are people that eat people. Oh, okay, gross. Yeah, and they think Jack is actually their chief. Why? Unclear. But the thing is, they actually plan on eating their chief. They have this whole ceremony plan. Oh, no. Yeah, so Will and the rest of the crew get put in these bone cages suspended from cliffs. Why would the cannibals hang their food over a cliff? Because it's gonna make for a fun escape scene in this movie we're making and no other reason. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, and so they all escape through the power of physics not being a thing and the whole thing's gonna take up a solid 20, 30 minutes of runtime with really fun action stuff. Does it move the story forward at all? Not really, no, but it's gonna take up a solid 20, 30 minutes of runtime with really fun action stuff. Well, great. Anyway, so meanwhile, Elizabeth has escaped and she's trying to catch up with everybody because she's in the movie too. Right. And so she sneaks onto the ship and tries to get this crew to bring her to the island of Tortuga. How does she manage that? Well, she leaves a dress lying around so everybody will think there's a ghost on the ship. That's her plan, tricking people into thinking she's a ghost. That's what we're going with. And then she does some expert level puppeteering work and it's completely dependent on nobody looking slightly upwards because then they'd see her just standing there. I mean, there's no way that plays out perfectly. And that plays out perfectly. Oh, okay. And so then Jack and Will are going to 
and encounter Davy Jones and his crew, and this guy just teleports over. Oh, this guy can teleport. I bet that's gonna come into play later. Nope. All right. And his little crew is super spooky because there's like this curse or whatever, and they're slowly becoming sea life and merging with the Flying Dutchman. What are you talking about? Well, they all have like sea stuff on them. Like one of them has a shark on his head. Davy Jones just full on has an octopus as a face. So how does that work? Did an octopus just settle on his face one day and just kind of stay there and merge with him? I don't know. Fair enough. So then Jack kind of backstabs Will and leaves them on the Flying Dutchman, but he gets to reconnect with his father, so that's kind of nice. Oh, he reconnects with his long lost partially a fish father. That's nice. Yeah, but then Will challenges Davy Jones to a game of Liar's Dice. Oh, he does? Yeah, and he says if he loses, he'll join the crew, but if he wins, Davy Jones has to give him the key to the chest, which he keeps on him. Oh, very high stakes. Yeah, and so Will's father jumps in the game too and loses to save Will. Oh. And Will is like, Dad, that whole thing was just so I could see where Davy Jones keeps the key, you dummy. What if Davy Jones didn't keep the key on him? Then Will wouldn't have found anything out. Yeah, it was a massive risk to take, but it works out perfectly as these things often do because I write them that way. Well, I guess it'll be hard to get the key off of him now, though. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he just walks into Davy Jones's room that night while he's sleeping and slips the key off of him. No problem. A strange man came onto his ship and specifically asked about the key that could lead to his death and he didn't take any precautions to protect it when he went to bed. That's right. Well, fantastic. So anyway, eventually Will finds himself hiding on the front of the Flying Dutchman, which is a ship that goes underwater. Seems like that might affect him in some way. Well, it doesn't. Okay, jeez. And so eventually Jack and Elizabeth and that jerk Norrington from the last movie, they all find the chest and then Will shows up too. How did Will get there? Oh, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about how Will gets places, sir. Okay, let me get off of that thing, you scary person. And so this big three-way sword fight breaks out for the chest because Norrington wants to use it to get his life back as a douchey officer and Jack wants it to call off the Kraken and Will wants it to release his father from the Dutchman. Seems like a couple of those goals might overlap. Maybe. So then Davy Jones and his crew show up and Norrington manages to get away with the heart. Oh no. And so when the others get on a ship there's gonna be this big Kraken attack and Elizabeth is gonna kiss Jack and handcuff him to the Black Pearl. Why? Well because the Kraken is after him specifically so this is the only way the others can get away. Oh that makes sense. So then Jack gets swallowed up by a Kraken and Davy Jones gets super angry about his missing heart and everybody else goes to see this lady Tia Dalma who reveals she brought Barbosa back from the dead. Whoa, wait, whoa, what's happening with all, all of that? Ah, uh, stay tuned. What? Oh yeah, we're just gonna cut it off right there so people will want to come see the next movie. Just not resolving anything at all? Yeah, so people will want to come see the next movie. That's actually very smart. Oh, and then we're gonna have a post credit scene where we find out that that dog is now the chief of the tribe. Oh, that's cute. Wait, they're gonna eat that dog, aren't they? Yeah. Oh my god. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. I do think we should get somebody wacky to come in and help with the designs of Davy Jones's crew. Those people need to be weird looking. I mean, Johnny Depp's in the movie. I mean, yeah, so? So, you know, pretty obvious who we could get to help out. So, you have a new Pirates movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So you know how the last one just kind of ended with nothing being resolved? Yeah, that's right. Jack Sparrow died and Barbosa returned from the dead, and then we just kind of cut to black. We sure did, sir, and by doing that, we pretty much ensured that people would come see this one. Because we kind of violated the concept of what constitutes a movie. That's right, I remember. So what happens in this one? Oh, we're gonna start this one off real strong. Amazing. By hanging a child. Oh my god, what? Yeah, see that bad guy Beckett? He's just hanging a bunch of pirates and they're gonna start singing a song which for some reason is gonna call on the nine pirate lords to convene. Oh, there are pirate lords? Yeah, it turns out pirates have an intricate political system with lords and kings and both Jack and Barbosa are pirate lords. How'd they become pirate lords? Unclear, but so they need to go get Jack from Davy Jones's locker so he can convene with the other pirate lords. How do they plan on getting there? Well, they go get these navigational charts from this other pirate lord in Singapore. Okay. So they follow these charts and they suddenly go over this massive waterfall that shows up out of nowhere, and that leads them to Davy Jones's locker. The massive waterfall wasn't mentioned on the map? No, because this way it's a fun surprise for the movie. Oh, nice of the cartographers to consider the audience. So then we're gonna meet up with Jack in Davy Jones's locker, which is a very strange place. Oh, it is? Yeah, he's got like a bunch of other Jack Sparrows in there with him, and he has a ship, and there are a bunch of rocks that are actually crabs. So is this like a spiritual place or a physical place? Yes. Didn't the Kraken swallow him at the end of the last movie? 
movie? What happened there? Did the Kraken poop him out? Unclear, but speaking of the Kraken, it's gonna die. Oh man, it's gonna be cool to see the Kraken get killed. That thing was intense. Yeah, definitely. Gonna happen off screen though. Oh. Yeah, it kinda just happened in between movies. We're gonna see its dead body on the beach though. Okay. So anyway, the gang all heads into Davy Jones's locker to get Jack, and then they need to figure out how to get back to the land of the living. So this is a physical place then, because people can physically go between there and the real world. Yeah, except no, not really. Oh, I'm very confused. So then they manage to get back to the world of the living by flipping their ship at sunset, which is how this works for some reason. Wow, so death really isn't permanent in these movies, huh? It's all very vague, sir, which allows us to bring main characters back from the dead, but also not do that for minor characters. Their own fault for being minor characters, I guess. They should have known better for sure, so then they're gonna go to the Brethren Court on Shipwreck Cove and meet with all the pirate lords. And what's gonna happen there? Oh, just a massive scene talking about the pirate code and pirate politics. Oh. Yeah, the pirates have very strict and intricate rules and everybody has to obey them. If there's one thing people know about pirates, it's that they're all about rules. Yeah, there's actually gonna be a ton of talking in this movie. Every dialogue scene's gonna last about 10 minutes of people explaining who they're backstabbing and why. Oh, did you need to pad the runtime a bit or something? Nope, the movie's gonna be three hours long. Oh my god. Oh, also I thought we could have Keith Richards cameo as Jack's father since Johnny Depp based the character on him. Oh, that's very exciting. What are we gonna have Keith do? Oh, you're gonna like this a lot. He's also gonna talk about politics. Extremely fun. Oh, it also turns out that dog that keeps popping up, that's his dog. Wasn't that dog left on the cannibal island at the end of the last movie? Yeah, maybe this dog is magic. I don't know. We're just gonna kind of go all in on the magic stuff because maybe that's what people liked about the first movie, hopefully. Jeez, I hope that's what they liked about it. Fingers crossed. So then we're also gonna find out that that Tia Dalma lady from the last movie, she's actually this goddess named Calypso. Oh. And there's this whole thing between her and Davy Jones where they were in love and she's the reason he cut his heart out. Pretty unhealthy relationship. For sure. And so since Calypso brought Barbosa back from the dead, he's gonna release her from her human form, which all the pirate lords put her in. Oh, what does that do? Oh, well, she turns into a giant and then a bunch of crabs and then she makes a whirlpool thing. You know, those do sound like things that may as well happen. It's all nautical and magical, so it does feel right. Yeah, then there's gonna be this big ship battle against Davy Jones. Oh, our physics gonna be a thing? Not at all. Amazing. Yeah, we're gonna keep doing that thing where if Jack Sparrow cuts a rope, that turns him into Spider-Man. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. And then we're gonna have this really wacky scene where Will and Elizabeth, they make Barbosa marry them in the middle of a big fight. Weren't they in a weird place after she kissed Jack in the last movie? What led to them getting over their differences? Well, the movie's almost over, sir. Oh, okay, yeah, gotta wrap that up for sure then. So then eventually Davy Jones is gonna stab Will Turner in the heart. Very rude. But there's this thing where if you stab Davy Jones's heart, you become immortal, but you also have to captain the Flying Dutchman ship. Oh, so this is another one of the death loopholes. Yeah, we got a ton of those. So so then even though Jack wanted to be immortal himself, he makes Will stab the heart to save his life. Oh, a very considerate stabbing. So then the ship sinks, but then it pops back up with Will as the captain, and he has a fun bandana now, which I guess he found at the bottom of the sea. Oh, underwater bandanas are tight. So then they have to go up against Beckett's ship, and this thing has cannons on both sides. Oh man, it's gonna be tough to take that down. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, both the Flying Dutchman and the Black Pearl attack from opposite its side, so this thing just gets ruined. But she said it had a bunch of cannons on both sides. Yeah, but it didn't use them at all. Why not? Well, because Beckett was busy having one of the coolest looking death scenes ever put to film. Oh, he was. Yeah, he's just gonna slowly and gracefully walk around the ship as every bit of it explodes right behind him after every step and all around him. It's gonna look incredible. The cannonballs just keep hitting everything but him, and the ship being actively destroyed doesn't affect his balance at all. Yeah, well, physics and probabilities aren't a thing in this movie. Also, it's gonna look incredible. Well, okay, great. And so then all the other ships from the East India Trading Company, they're like, all right, bye then. Why don't they attack? Do they not have as many ships as the pirates? Oh, yeah, no, they have like hundreds more ships than them. So then why do they leave? Well, the movie's pretty much done, so we're gonna do that thing where when the main ship is destroyed, all the other bad guys just aren't a threat anymore. Oh, okay, gotcha. So then Will's gonna impregnate Elizabeth. Oh my god. But then because of his new curse, he has to leave, and he's only allowed to come back on land once every ten years. And there's no way around that? Nope. Very sad. Well, I mean, we did show Davy Jones standing in a bucket of water on land earlier, so I guess he could do that if he wanted to. But Will's not gonna do that. No, he's not gonna do that for some reason. Well, okay then. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a nice end to the trilogy, you know? Really close the chapter on these Pirates movies. Right. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna need you to end this one by setting up a sequel. Will do, sir.
So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. Movie number four, what are we gonna do to keep things fresh? Well, that's a good question, because at this point in massively popular franchises, movies risk drifting into this kind of self-plagiarism, you know, where they're going through a checklist of moments that people come to expect, and the characters become parodies of themselves. Right, right, right. Right. So how do we avoid that? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, fair enough. So we're gonna go all in on Jack Sparrow, right? And there's a magical thing going on. Some pirates are undead. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of sword fights that aren't based in physics at all. There's a young couple that fall in love. Sounds like a pirate's movie to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what exactly happens in this thing? Well, we're gonna meet up with Jack, right? And he's trying to save Gibbs by pretending to be this judge. Oh, he is? Yeah, but he's still got his eyeliner and his gold teeth, so it's very funny. So not only does nobody realize that he's not this judge, but they also don't notice his extremely piratey features. Somehow they don't, but eventually they're gonna get caught because their getaway driver had accepted a bribe, so he drives them into custody. If they knew there was a getaway driver and they knew who he was, why didn't they just stop them at the courthouse? Unclear. So then Jack has to meet King George, and he's upset because there are reports that the Spanish know where the Fountain of Youth is. Oh yeah, Jack was looking for that at the end of the last movie, wasn't he? He was, and he came really close to finding it, but then he gave up. Oh. So King George wants Jack to guide a ship that's led by Captain Barbosa, who's working for him now and missing a leg. He's from the other movies. He sure is, sir. But then Jack does that thing where he does a bunch of wacky stuff and escapes. He wasn't chained up. He was, but the chains were making too much noise, so the king had them removed. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, whatever. Anyway, so then Jack's gonna go to this place where somebody's pretending to be him to recruit people for an expedition. Right. And it turns out it's this beautiful woman disguised as him, and he used to have a romantic thing with her. A beautiful woman was dressed like him and interacting with people and nobody noticed? That's what we're going with. Wow, disguises are extremely effective in these movies, huh? They sure are, sir. So eventually Jack's gonna find out that she's actually Blackbeard's daughter and he ends up on Blackbeard's ship. And what's Blackbeard's deal? Well, he's got a zombie crew and a sword that makes his ship go fast when he points it. What's that all about? Oh, we're well past explaining that kind of thing. That's fair, I don't know why I asked. So anyway, there's this prophecy, right? And it says that Blackbeard's gonna be killed by a man with one leg, so he he wants to find the Fountain of Youth. A prophecy? Yes, sure, a prophecy. I don't even care anymore. Isn't the Fountain of Youth's whole thing restoring people's youth? Why would it help prevent a murder? Well, sir, because of magic, it's also helpful for murder prevention is what I seem to have written here. Oh, multitasking fountains are tight. But the thing is, to get the Fountain of Youth to work, they need to get their hands on a mermaid tear. Why would the Fountain of Youth need a mermaid tear to work? Because I thought it'd be pretty cool to have some mermaids in the movie. That makes sense. Oh, and also they need these two chalices and one person has to drink water out of one of them with a mermaid tear and the other person has to drink water without a mermaid tear. Okay, so that should be enough objects for them to have to find and fill up some screen time. Exactly. So then the person that drank the mermaid tear gets all the years the other person has lived plus any years they would have lived if they hadn't drank the thing. So who figured these very specific things out? Some humans a long time ago, I guess. They just happen to be drinking water out of two chalices, one of which had a mermaid tear in it. Sure, I don't care. So then they get their hands on this mermaid named Serena, and she has this instant connection with a missionary that Blackbeard had on his ship. Why do they have an instant connection? Well, they're both attractive. Gotcha, and so they take one of her tears and they go to the fountain? Well, they have to carry her along with them. Why? Because the tears have to be fresh. That's part of it. So that means somebody attempted it with a mermaid tear that wasn't fresh and then identified that that was the problem, and word of that somehow reached these pirates. That's what we're going with, because or else there's no reason for them to bring a mermaid along with them. Fair enough. Man, it's super helpful for these stories that hyper-specific magic with very vague backgrounds is a thing. Oh, you have no idea. I'm using magic to explain everything here. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So anyway, then at a certain point, both Jack and Barbosa are trying to steal the chalices that the Spanish have, and they're gonna get captured. Why don't the Spanish just kill them? Unclear. Huh. So then Barbosa reveals he doesn't even care about the Fountain of Youth. He just wants to kill Blackbeard because he took the Black Pearl and made it tiny. What? Magic. Gotcha. So wait, Barbosa doesn't really want the Fountain of Youth, and Jack doesn't really want it, but he was roped into the whole thing. Yeah, and Blackbeard and his daughter just want it because of the prophecy, and the Spanish just wanted to destroy it in the name of religion. And the British only want it because the Spanish want it, so none of these characters actually really want the thing that they're all racing towards here. Yeah, no, not really. The protagonist was kind of just dragged into somebody else's adventures, and everybody's kind of evil, so it doesn't really matter who gets there first. That's right. So what part of the story are people supposed to care about? Well, there's that love story between the missionary and the mermaid. So people are gonna care about that. Oh, I seriously doubt it, but Jack Sparrow's in the movie, so it's gonna make money. That's a good point. So anyway, back to the story. Jack and Barbosa have to figure out how to 
to escape, right? That's gonna be hard to do as prisoners. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, with the rope around him, Jack starts to climb up the palm tree he's tied to. Don't the guards see him? No, cause see, they tied them up to trees pretty far away from the camp with no one guarding them. Oh, people in this movie are very bad at taking prisoners. They sure are, sir. So Jack manages to get to the top of the tree. How does he get the rope around the top branches? Oh, we're gonna cut away for a second when he's doing that, so don't even worry about how he did that. Oh, great. And then since Jack Sparrow with some rope is still basically Spider-Man, he's gonna grab a tree and tie a bunch of bad guys together and escape. Wow, 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 wow. So then eventually everybody's gonna end up at the fountain, right? It's like some kind of big fountain party. Ah, like the Friends intro. Kind of, yeah, but no, not at all. Okay. And so the Spanish are like, guess what? We're gonna destroy the chalices and wreck this place because only God can grant eternal life. Why'd they wait until now to destroy the chalices? Dramatic effect. Gotcha. And then there's gonna be this big fight and Barbosa's gonna end up stabbing Blackbeard with a poison blade and Angelica's gonna get cut too. Oh, very exciting. And then that mermaid pops up with the chalices for no apparent reason and Jack fills them up and offers them to Angelica and her dad. Okay. And Blackbeard's gonna selfishly drink the one with the mermaid tear, but then Jack is like, actually, I knew you'd do that, so I switched them. Very clever. Yeah, so then Blackbeard dies and Angelica's wound heals up. So the fountain also heals wounds? Yeah, it's magic, so sure, okay. Sure, okay. Oh, and also that missionary guy is hurt, and so that mermaid kisses him and drags him to the bottom of the ocean, which is somehow helpful. Oh. All right. Yeah, I'm not really attached to them either, sir, but we need a young couple in love. That's the formula. Fair enough. And so then Jack drops Angelica off at this deserted island with a gun and a single bullet. Oh, and her hands are tied? Actually, Jack is like, I'm fully aware that you got out of your restraints half an hour ago. So how come she doesn't grab the gun and point it at him? Unclear. So then Jack gets on a boat and leaves while she's all upset. And she doesn't make any effort to get on the boat. Isn't she kind of invincible now because of the fountain? What's going on here? Yeah, listen, sir, I just want to sideline her without killing her in case people like the character and we could bring her back. Oh, okay. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, it doesn't really feel like any characters have grown or changed or that any of this has had any impact on anything. Well... Yeah, that's about right. Well, that's all right with me. We should definitely shoot this in 3D, though. That's all the rage. We could use those avatar cameras. It sounds expensive. Yeah, it shouldn't be too expensive budget-wise, although I guess Johnny Depp is gonna cost a lot. Oh yeah, this might get out of hand. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. What if we did a Pirates of the Caribbean sequel? Oh, I feel like we've had this conversation before. We have, sir, and we're gonna keep having this conversation so long as it keeps making us money. Oh, I like the way you money. So what happens in this one? I mean, I feel like you already know. I feel like I do, but can you elaborate, though? It doesn't necessarily feel relevant, sir. You know, Jack Sparrow, an antagonist with an undead crew, a young couple falling in love, some vaguely magical and nautical things. Oh, that does sound like a pirate movie, can you elaborate more? Uh... Yeah, okay. Amazing. So in this one, we're gonna start with Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner's son, this kid named Henry. They're from the other movies. They sure are, sir. And so Henry manages to find that flying Dutchman ship that Will is on, you know, with the curse. Right. And so Henry's like, Dad, I figured out how to break your curse. We need to get Poseidon's trident. And Will is like, quiet, the crew's gonna hear you. Isn't he the captain? Why is he worried about them hearing? Well, I'm told that scenes need tension, so I'm kind of fabricating some here. Oh, okay, very smart. So anyway, Will is like, yeah, no, it's impossible to find the trident by now, but nine years later, Henry's still looking for it. Oh, motivated offspring is tight. Yeah, and eventually this evil ghost Salazar is gonna kill his entire crew, but he's gonna leave Henry alive. Why? Well, he's like, I want you to tell Jack Sparrow that I'm gonna kill him one day. And he can't tell him that himself? No, because this curse is keeping him in that general area. And also he's like, dead men tell no tales. Oh. Which is gonna be the name of the movie. He said the name of the movie. He did. Amazing. So why does the Salazar guy want to kill Jack anyway? Oh, well, see, Salazar was a pirate hunter, but then young Jack did a tricky move that led him to crashing into a cursed triangle thing and becoming a ghost along with his crew. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, and then Jack became captain of the Black Pearl, and his crew gave him a bunch of costume elements, like his hair beads. Well, that's how he got the hair beads. That's how he got his hair beads. You know, I've been enjoying these movies, but the whole time I've been like, how the heck did he get those 
freaking hair beads. Well, we're finally answering that, sir. And also, we're going to reveal how we got the name Jack Sparrow. How did that happen? Well, see, when Salazar saw Jack, he said he thought he looked like a little sparrow. So that's where that came from. Salazar said that to his crew before they all died. How did word of that even spread? Unclear. And so how are we going to learn all this stuff anyway? Oh, well, Salazar is going to be telling the story to Barbosa. I thought you said dead men tell no tales. You just said that. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Whoopsie. Anyway, so then we're going to meet this girl, Karina, right? Okay. And she, she has a diary from her long lost father. And that is, it's also a map. And you need the map to find the island where the trident of Poseidon is supposed to be. Sure. But you can only, you got, you can only see it when there's a blood moon. A blood moon, right? And you need a jewel, too. A, you, a red jewel? Are you just coming up with this stuff right now? Oh, yeah, of course I am, 100%. But now they have some things they need to gather throughout the movie, and that's gonna fill up the runtime quite a bit. That works for me. Oh, and also Jack is gonna trade that magical compass of his for a drink, and the betrayal of the compass frees Salazar and his crew from the Devil's Triangle. Hasn't Jack given away his compass before in this franchise? Yeah, but this time he did it with different intentions or something, so now the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. So so eventually Jack and Karina and Henry are all gonna meet and they're gonna team up because they want to fight this trident before Salazar kills Jack. Wow, pretty wacky coincidence that Jack did the thing that releases Salazar just before meeting Henry who just met Salazar who told him to tell Jack that he would kill him. Extremely wacky, sir. What are the odds, right? Oh, just so impossibly slim, I imagine. Probably. So anyway, Salazar is gonna get Barbosa to help him track down Jack because he's from the other movies. He's from the other movies. He sure is, sir. But eventually Barbosa is gonna betray Salazar, because double crosses are things that people have come to expect from Pirates films, so we got them in here. Very true. But now they don't have a ship, so that's kind of a problem. So what do they do? Well, in the last movie, we revealed that the Black Pearl is now tiny and inside a bottle, and so Jack had that in his jacket, and they just make that big again with magic or something. Jack has a glass bottle in his jacket the entire time. Doesn't he fall constantly? How does that thing not break? I don't, probably magic again. It doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't, no. And so eventually, Barbosa's gonna figure out that Karina is his daughter. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's gonna be an awesome big reveal. Is it though? I'm not sure the moment feels entirely earned. I don't think you need to earn moments like that. They get away with that stuff all the time in, you know, soap operas. That's a good point. So eventually they're gonna figure out that the trident is off this magical island and the ocean is gonna split into two towards it. Oh, and I guess Salazar's on their tail, huh? He is, but the thing about Salazar's curse is that he can't walk on land, so he has to possess Henry, which is a thing he's able to do that I'm just mentioning now for the first time. Oh, very cool. But one guy's like, sir, if you go on land while possessing someone, you're gonna be stuck on land forever. And Salazar's like, yes, but the trident can help with that. Okay, and how does everybody know all these very specific curse rules? I don't know. Maybe when you get cursed, it comes with an instruction manual. That makes sense. So then there's gonna be this big old fight at the bottom of the ocean, and Henry and Karina are gonna solve a little riddle, because curses often involve riddles. They sure do. So what do they figure out? So they realize that the trident contains all curses, so they have to destroy it. Wow, so it must be difficult to break the trident of Poseidon, god of the sea. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they hit it, and it breaks. Oh, well, great. Yeah, it works out great. You hit it, and it breaks. That's how that works. You'd think that thing might be a bit more solid, but fantastic news that it's not. So now that all curses are broken, the sea's gonna start collapsing onto itself, obviously, and Salazar's men aren't cursed anymore. Oh, so everybody has to run? They do, and all the good guys are running, and they jump onto an anchor from the Black Pearl and Barbosa's gonna sacrifice himself to save Karina. Right, because she's his daughter is what you seem to have written. Exactly, and later somebody's gonna ask her her name and she's gonna be like, Karina Barbosa. Wow, well you seem really pleased with this, so I guess it'll be in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does the movie end? Well, now that all curses are broken, Will Turner can come back on land. So I guess his ship was above water when the curse ended then? Yeah, I guess it was. And so what happens with the souls of the dead now? Wasn't it kind of Will's job to bring them to the afterlife? Yeah, they're dead anyway, so I feel like it doesn't matter. Wait, wasn't the curse the only thing keeping Will alive? They cut his heart out in the third movie. Look, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about Will's curse. He's all better now, okay? Uh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thanks, and so then Will is reunited with his son and with Elizabeth. You know, now that I think of it, it kind of seems out of character for Elizabeth to not have joined on a big sea adventure to save Will. Yeah, but Kira Knightley costs a lot now, so... Oh, good point. Yeah, she should stay on land for sure then. And then in a post credit scene, we're gonna have 
Davy Jones show up and we're gonna see his shadow with the tentacles and stuff? Wasn't his whole appearance part of his curse? That shouldn't still be on his head. Yeah, I don't care. Fair enough. And so yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a pirate's movie to me. I'm just not sure we need to do that whole Karina is a Barbosa thing. Like, does everything have to be connected? Does everybody have to be related all the time? Yeah, because that automatically makes it good storytelling. Oh, okay, then let's keep doing it. Hey everybody, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you liked it, feel free to click the like button and the subscribe button and all, you know, buttons of that nature. There are also like hundreds of other episodes on the channel that you can check out if you want. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what other movies you want to see pitches for. And check back soon for a new one, because there's going to be new ones, you know? Okay, bye.